Hello, and welcome to the third video in this series outlining the simulation process for student SAE CAR teams. In this video, we'll cover setting up boundary conditions and solving for our torsion tests in 1D and 3D solutions. Similarly to last video, I'll start off with the 1D case, and then I'll cover the 3D case, and finally, we'll compare the two. To begin, I'll start out by entering the sim from the fem we were working on in the last video. Once here, we have two things to do set up constraints and load conditions. So I'll begin with the constraints. I'm creating two fixed constraints at the back. As you recall, I connected these to the chassis with two RBE2 collectors to enforce infinite stiffness on this. So whatever I apply to the node in the middle will be applied to the chassis wherever it connects. Next, I'll apply my forces. Here I have RBE3s, so the forces should carry and distribute to the nodes that the element is connected to. I'll apply one force upwards and one force downwards. Next, I'll right click on my solution and edit. Come into my bulk data parameters and turn on auto MPC as I forgot to do so last time for the 1D case. Then I'll simply solve and we'll look at our results. This solution is not sped up, it's in real time. So now we're able to review these results by opening the results tab in the simulation navigator, double clicking on the results, and clicking on what we want to view. In this case, we can look at the displacement magnitude, and we can even animate our solution. Or if we'd like, we can look at the von Mises stresses in the part and animate that as well. Here we can see visual cues for where the worst stresses and displacements are in the vehicle, and we can do tons of other post-processing, such as exporting data, creating side-by-side -side viewports, or labeling on the graph maximum and minimum stresses. To set up the 3D simulation, it's essentially the exact same as the 1D simulation, so I'll just fast forward through the whole thing. Essentially, I'm naming my solution, in this case, turning off the geometry check with an executive control in order to ignore those failed elements, making sure auto MPC is activated, applying two fixed constraints to the back two tire points, two loads to the front two, and pressing run. This solution has thousands of elements and nodes, so it actually took 35 minutes to run. Thus, we can start to see why the 1D case is often going to be a better idea. And as you can see, we have similar results, which can be post-processed in the same way, animated, and the stresses and displacement magnitudes seem to be fairly similar. I think it's something important to note that if the boundary conditions were set up slightly differently, whereas if the fixed locations were different and the loads were applied in different ways, this simple simulation could actually cover a lot of different scenarios and could be grown from there. For example, I could easily create a cornering test or I could create a low fidelity impact test without doing anything but changing where the boundary conditions are applied.